God's night gun, who'd have thought I'd ever set foot in Savannah again? Father's gonna be thrown to pieces that you have, Scarlet. To pieces? You know what Pa used to say about Grandfather? He said Pierre Robillard wouldn't give you the time of day if your watch was broke. Even Mother got a good laugh out of that. She couldn't deny it, not even about her own father. I suppose Father never was too very fond of Gerald O'Hara, if truth be told. Well, at least I'll be able to make the acquaintance of my other kin while I'm here. What kin is that, Scarlet? My O'Hara kin. Perhaps you better not make note of that intention to your grandfather, Scarlet. Perhaps not. <laughs> Mind your manners now, won't you, Scarlet? Father is quite old and considerably frail. Considerably. Wouldn't do to tax his decline in strength with your sometimes, how shall I put it? <laughs> quite forthright manner. Is it gonna be necessary for me to genuflect when he grants me audience? Now you see, that is what I am talking about, Scarlet. You are just being naughty on purpose. On purpose. <laughs> Jerome, we're here. We're here. Welcome again to Savannah and home, ma'am. Thank you. Jerome, this is our niece, Mrs. Butler. Yes, I remember Miss Butler. And how are you, Jerome? I'm well and fine, ma'am, and hoping the same for yourself. Jerome, is that them come? The mister's had his sleeping chamber relocated to the parlor floor of the house, ma'am. It facilitates his movements and avoidance of the staircase, which had become a considerable trial for him to manage. Jerome! Yes, sir, mister, coming right along now. Doesn't sound all that frail to me. He's asking for you now, dearest. I'll be just a minute, Aunt Julie. He could scarcely believe it when we told him you were here. I could scarcely believe it myself. You will be nice now, won't you, Scarlett? I will, Aunt Julie, I promise. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I don't know why I'm caring how I look, anyhow. It's probably blind as a bat by now. I'll try to keep my promise, but if you hear any shooting, it'll be me having run out of patience. Hello, Grandfather. Are you awake? It's Scarlet, Grandfather. I had hoped that in time you would come to favor less your father and more your mother. I see I am to be disappointed in that wish. I guess so. I'm more O'Hara than Robillard, Grandfather. Always have been, if I dare say so, in this house. I've never known you not to say whatever you dared. Mm -hmm. Sit. I promised Aunt Julie I'd be on my best behavior. You have grown older. So have you. But not to such advantage. Why, Grandfather, am I mishearing a remark that sounded so breathtakingly close to a compliment? To what do we owe the dubious pleasure of your presence here in Savannah? That's more like it. Aunt Eulalie and Aunt Pauline invited me along to celebrate your birthday. And it seemed an appropriate opportunity for me to attend to a couple of other matters here. Other matters? One personal in nature, the other more like business. As to the business. Have you come to beg money of me again? I never begged you for money, Grandfather. I only asked you for the loan of some to feed my starving family after the Yankees passed through, leaving nothing but ruin and death behind them. I got along all right without your help. And what you see before you now is a woman of considerable means. And I'm here to spend some of that considerable means on what one of my sisters saw fit to give away. I would have to wonder what it might be that your sister would value so little and you so much. Tara. Oh, fabled Tara. There's no fable to it. It's home. At least it was, till Kareem decided to give away her one-third share in it. Seems she turned severely religious for some reason or other. It's her intention to become a nun. Kareem always was kind of flighty. To be a Catholic, of course, requires in the first instance a certain degree of mental instability. <laughs> you made mention of some personal reason for your presence here. I'm going to search out my relatives. Relatives? I am the last of the Robillard line in Savannah. I know that. O'Hara's, I mean. Oh, oh the peasants. 
Maybe some of Pa's brothers are still alive. Pa'd like it if he knew I was looking at my long-lost kin in Savannah. Did you really hate Pa as much as he said you did? When my youngest and most cherished daughter wed herself to Gerald O'Hara, there was no visible bottom to the pit of disastrous folly into which she flung both herself and the honorable name of Robillard. I guess Pa wasn't exaggerating. May I ask who it was witnessed this supposed indiscretion on Scarlet's part? Supposed? She was seen going up the stairs at the Drummond Hotel with the man she herself later admitted my mother was Ashley Wilkes. What's supposed about that? As for who saw them, my mother declined to say. And did this nameless accuser also happen to run along up the stairs and look peek through the keyhole? I guess you don't have to take this too seriously if you don't care to, Sally. I am plenty serious. What I am asking is, how do you know that what went on between Scarlet and this Wilkes fella is what you are so sure went on? I'd say that's a considerably naive idea coming from someone of your experience of the world. Oh, hell, it's fair! Fair! Since when has Scarlet ever deserved fair? A woman who's forever inclined to rotten, rash behavior when in a state of mental distress. Well, I guess you sure must have put her in one of those, all right. What I believe, Sally? Because Scarlet's never entirely gotten over her feelings for Ashley Wilkes. And the other week, she decided to do something about that. I still think it'd be decent of you to hear her side of it, Rhett. Where's she gone off to, do you know? No. It'll be necessary to find out. You are going to get her side of it, then? No. I'm going to divorce her. Good morning, ma'am. Isn't it a fine one? It is, yes. I'd like to see Mr. O'Hara. You're seeing him? How might I be of service? Well, actually, the Mr. O'Hara I'm looking for would be more elderly. Mr. Andrew O'Hara or Mr. James O'Hara. Perhaps I've come to the wrong store. You've come to the right one. And I'm their nephew, Jamie O'Hara, at your service. Oh, my goodness, then you're my cousin. Am I indeed? Certainly one not known to me. I'm Katie Scarlett, Gerald's daughter from Atlanta. Uh, no doubt you don't know it, but my mother passed on. That was your Auntie Bridget. God rest her dear soul. Also, Uncle Andy's wife as well, Auntie Una. Uh, took the heart out of poor Uncle Andy. Followed her within a month. And Uncle James, then, is he gone too? Gone? <laughs> He's not even thinking of going. <laughs> He's a fair chance of outliving the lot of us. <laughs> Oh, he'd be beside himself to see you, Katie Scarlett. You know, he's getting on in years, but I mean, he's still able to pull his weight. And how? <laughs> he's living with us now, me and my family. That's my wife, Maureen, and kids. There's eight of them. At least that was the count when they left the house this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and here's that very house, be it ever so humble. <laughs> but we've all come from a lot worse, hmm? And no complaints now. God rest his soul, I always said your father was the best of the lot of us. Have you not heard me say it, Jimmy? I have, and often. The runt of the little he was. But hard as nails, and O'Hara to the smallest bone in his body. <laughs> A fine, small man was Gerald, much as myself. <laughs> I suppose you know how he come by that grand plantation of his, eh? Playing poker with my money, that's how. And did I ever see a nickel of it back? I did not. <laughs> did he ever happen to relate how it was he come to leave Ireland, Katie Scarlet? I would guess upwards of about a hundred times. Uh, fled with a price on his head, he did. One blow of his fist and down went that English landlord's rent agent never to rise again on this world. A father to make a woman proud, I should say. And so I was, and am. Here's to a dutiful and loving daughter, then. May every man be blessed with at least one of our like, and five would be better. <laughs> and I'll add to that, with a welcome for Cousin Scarlet, to our hearts and to our homes. May she never be out of the one, nor long absent from the other. I'm more touched than I can find words to say. Well, they're lying about someplace. I'm sure you'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> right, enough of the feasting. Let's have some fiddling.
You all right, darling? Oh, what is Scarlet? doing there? That Daniel. Oh, my dear. Are you all right, Scarlett? Scarlett, you simply must let us summon a physician. You're just being stubborn. Stubborn? There's no need. I'm fine. I just overdid it a bit, that's all. And I'm recovering quite nicely without the aid of a doctor. Mm -hmm. The best thing you could do for me would be to stop standing there, wringing your hands and just chew. Go on now, both of you, chew. <laughs> if you should feel the slightest further, a little bit uh, indisposed, you could call for a... Uh, pansy. Yes, pansy. Uh, and she would send me for the doctor chew. and then chew, chew. Mm -hmm. uh, a scar. You! Yes. You are still looking kind of purplish, Miss Gardner. Are you sure that you... I'm not ill, Pansy. I'm... indisposed. Now, it must be supper time. Go and get your supper. Well, can I bring you something up? Not right now. Maybe later. Go and have your supper. Position. <laughs> You're just going to have to go on being the teeniest little bit of a fib for a while. I know you don't mind, considering the good cause it's in. The good cause being just the exact right time to introduce you to your daddy. I don't know when the right time will be, but I'll just have to content myself with... Imagining the expression on the handsome visage of Mr. Red Butler. And when he finds out I'm giving him another sweet life. For the one we so tragically lost. Oh, my darling little indisposition. I pray you're a girl. Please, please be a girl. say there's something of an improvement over the last lot. And right to say it. There's ten more coming from New York within the week. And a thousand rounds. That's all right then. Will I make the usual arrangements for the shipment? You will. From the look of them, I'd venture your hands haven't had the feel of kitchen work for quite some time, Scarlet. If ever. They've done far rougher things than shell peas in their time, Maureen. Have they? You don't look it. <laughs> Are you rich, Scarlet? <laughs> well, I guess you could say I'm pretty well off, yes. So I says to Jamie, carries herself rich, I says. Not to mention stopping at the manse of Mr. Pierre Robillard, grand mucky muck of Savannah Hoy Polloy. Should I tell you how I got rich? I think I'd enjoy the telling. Well. So that was the inheritance from my second husband. I took that. If I'm late for lunch, I must be in time for supper. Colum! You did <laughs> Oh, not a word of warning. Oh, I was hoping to catch you in the act. Get away, you terrible man. <laughs> if I wasn't a priest, there's nothing that'd save you from my worldly intentions. Blasphemer. Now, here is a surprise like none you've had recent. I'll bet Miss Sunday Bonnet on that. Well, she's the landlord's daughter come for the rent. Nothing of the kind. She's Scarlett O'Hara Butler down from Charleston to make the acquaintance of her Savannah kin. And long overdue it was. Scarlett, 
say hello to Father Colum Terence O'Hara, here from Ireland, and another one of your cousins. May God have mercy on you. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Scarlett O'Hara Butler. Well, bless me, Father. It's been a heck of a long time since I've been to confession. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Father. Happy birthday, Father. Happy birthday, Grandfather. Will you open your gifts in the drawing room, Father? No. We could have them brought in here, of course. Would you rather that, Father? I would not. Where would you like to open your presents, Grandfather? At a place of my choosing, at a time of my choice, and most certainly in private. I suppose if I gave it some considerable thought, I might be able to imagine something sadder than opening birthday presents alone, but I doubt it. <gasps> Scarlet, good heavens. I was sort of hoping to enjoy your seeing what I got you, Grandfather. Perhaps you will. I mean me seeing you seeing it. I know what you mean. <gasps> now see what you've done. See what you've done in absolute and certain knowledge that Scarlet will not make her own apologies, no matter how deeply owed. May I beg your pardon in her stead, Father? However much Pauline and I may regret having to return to Charleston tomorrow, we can. And certainly you may take some modicum of comfort in knowing that Scarlet will be returning with us. She will... I'll be staying. I beg your pardon? I'll be staying on in Savannah for a bit. What are you saying? She says she'll be staying here for a while. Are you deaf? May one ask why, Scarlet? Because I still haven't settled with the Sisters of Mercy about buying back Green Chateau, and I'm not leaving Savannah till I do. And besides that, I'm just starting to get to know my relatives here, my O'Hara relatives, and I'm in no hurry to stop knowing them so quick. Well, where will you stay? I beg your pardon. If you remain in Savannah, where will you stay? My O'Hara cannot be glad to have me stay with them, but... They don't have any room for Pansy, and I can't get along without Pansy. Of course, I could go to a hotel. I suppose there must be at least one decent accommodation in Savannah. Or I could just offer myself up to the good graces of Grandfather Robillard in the hopes that he might provide me with a roof over my head for the relatively brief time I'll be remaining. Stay, if you like. It is a matter of supreme indifference to me. See? I knew I'd be welcome. Get in. Good morning. Fred, well, good morning. Oh, boy. Hi on this fine day, my dear. Quite fine on this fine day, and yourself? I couldn't be better. I see you've made a purchase of a new frock. A frock? Well, no, it's a... <gasps> There you go again, teasing me, Brett Butler. Uh, how might I make amends? I might find some forgiveness in my heart if you would offer me a ride to the library. If it isn't too terribly bold and inappropriate of me to mention it, I was sincerely sorry to hear of the difficulties between you and Mrs. Butler. Thank you. Well, that's boldness. That must be a quality I rather admire in women. That's very unusual. In my experience, which of course has been quite limited, I've come to observe that as a rule, gentlemen are generally somewhat discomposed by any show of forthrightness in a lady. I think gentlemen generally are. I gather you don't count yourself in that company? In the company of gentlemen, but the company of gentlemen discomposed by forthright ladies. <laughs> are you teasing me again? Why do you keep doing that? I seem unable to resist it, don't I? <laughs> Maybe it's because of the charming, delightful manner with which you respond to it. Daddy says you're something of a gambler. Well, I've played a hand of cards now and again. Mother doesn't like Daddy to gamble. She says there's altogether too much chance of losing. Well, you don't chance the losing, you can't chance the winning. Wish I could be that way sometimes. What way? The way you said about gambling. Sometimes I wish I could throw all caution to the four winds and laugh at fate and let the chips fall where they may. Maybe you will one day. I can't imagine it. Well, sometimes we need someone to help our imaginations along a bit. Do you think so? I've often known that to be the case. Always bearing in mind, of course, that you risk the losing. Mm -hmm. 
second chance to win it. This is it. What's the matter? Maybe I best wait outside. Why? Being a Baptist. Don't be silly. It's not a church. It's a convent for nuns. Even if it was a church, you'd be perfectly free to go in. Besides, they'd probably be delighted to get their hands on you. The decision, of course, lies in the bishop's hands. You mean you can't accept my offer on your own? Well, that'd be quite out of the question. You mean I have to go talk to the bishop now? Well, certainly not. I will present your suggestion to him on your behalf. Well, I wouldn't want to put you to all that trouble, sister. I'd be more than happy to speak to the bishop myself. I'm afraid that would be impossible. When will you talk to him? I have an appointment with Bishop Flynn three days hence on other matters. Perhaps the opportunity will arise at that time for me to convey your wishes to him, Mrs. Butler. He's Irish. Uh, County Meath, I believe. Well, do you think it might be possible for you to mention to him that my maiden name is O'Hara? Just as a note, a personal curiosity on my part, Mrs. Butler, if I may. Go right ahead. Well, should the bishop look favorably upon your request and agree to exchange our interest in Tara for your generous donation to the Sisters of Mercy, by my reckoning, that still leaves the one-third share in the property retained by your other sister. Sue Ellen. Sue Ellen, yes which would effectively still deny you the full ownership you so passionately desire. Your reckoning is right, sister. I'll just have to think about that tomorrow. Miss Scarlet! Oh, Miss Scarlet, wake up! He says he wants to see you right this minute, he says. What? Who wants me? Him. What's the matter, Grandfather? Has something happened? My breakfast is unsatisfactory. You got me out of bed to tell me that? I got you out of bed to tell you to do something about it. Me? What have I got to do with your breakfast? Just send it back to the kitchen and tell them to bring you what you want. You tell them. What do you take me for? Some kind of hired help? Order your own breakfast. I'm going back to bed. The bed to which you believe you are returning, young woman, belongs to me. And you occupy it only by my grace and favor. Is that a threat? It is a pertinent observation. I think maybe I'll talk to your cook about her grapes. I wonder if you have noticed the portrait of your grandmother, Rabia, in the drawing room. I have. She was a stunningly beautiful woman. You favor her remarkably. Why, well, thank you, Grandfather. That's very flattering. Would that you might resemble her in other respects. What other respects? She was a woman of consummate grace, of great gentleness and gentility. I guess I was out of school the day they handed those out. Still, I suppose there might be something to be said for spirit. There's folks who think so. I shouldn't wonder. Grace and gentility and all that. Those are easy things to take to. I guess maybe spirit takes some getting used to by some before they can appreciate it. You may be right. Uh, what precisely is wrong with the grits? Where's your parish gone? I have no parish gone. Who trust him with one? Only a fool or the devil. Are you a missionary priest? I am. Laboring to ease the suffering of the poor and the bereft. And there's no one like him for it. Mm. I suppose you must travel quite a bit. Oh, wherever I'm called. But I'm never long away from home in Ireland. You don't happen to have any influence with Bishop Flynn here in Savannah, do you, by any chance? <laughs> a hard man, the good bishop. Not easily influenced. Why do you ask? Because he turned me down about buying that Korean share of tarot. I think I mentioned that to you when he wanted to buy it. Turned you down, has he? I can hardly keep from crying every time I think about it. Would have meant the world to me. I wonder if perhaps the bishop might be persuaded otherwise. By who? 
Are you aware there's a new cathedral in the process of being erected here in Savannah? No, oh, is there? Mm, there is. And the foreman of all the bricklayers laboring on this magnificent structure is a man called Tommy Shannon, a good friend to yours truly, and has been these many years. He's also the husband to my sister Pidge. Now, Tommy could be persuaded to let it be known, in an indirect manner, mind, that a considerable slowdown in the progress of the work might take place, unless the good bishop were to reconsider his unreasonable attitude. That's blackmail. Oh, but of course, if it doesn't sit well with your way of thinking... I didn't say it didn't sit well. Family. It's a grand thing. If I were your lawyer, Rhett, this document would never have come to be drawn up at all. Why not? Why? Hells, hells, man, it flies in the face of every moral tenet that we hold dear to our hearts. My lawyer did mention it was a somewhat unusual action for an individual's take. Somewhat unusual? Good heavens, Rhett, it is almost unheard of. Well, maybe it should be heard of a bit more often, Henry. Have you no respect whatsoever for the sanctity of marriage? I guess that'd depend on the marriage, Henry. I can think of three or four right now I'd say don't have a whole lot of sanctity, you know? And I guess I'd have to add my own to that number. Have you informed Scarlett of, of these intentions? I would have if I could. I don't know where she is. Red, I wish with all my heart you would reconsider this drastic action. It so violates everything we believe in. I'd appreciate it if you forward those papers to your client with the utmost dispatch, Henry. Oh, poor Scarlett. If there's one thing Scarlet isn't, it's poor. You wanted to see me, Grandfather? First, I wish to thank you for your birthday gift to me. You're welcome. I'm glad it fits. I apologize for losing my temper the other day and the result of that. I am 94 years old. You sure don't look it. You needn't carry your remorse to the extent of desperate flattery. Can't take it back. I have no reasonable expectation of living much longer. I have a request to make to you. It is my wish that you remain with me here for the duration of my life. Remain with you? I don't understand, Grandfather. If you will remain in this house as its chatelaine, attend to my comforts, conform with my wishes, I am prepared to designate you as my sole heir. In my estate, as you surely are aware, is not inconsiderable. I'm a married woman, Grandfather. No, I expect I shall be able to tolerate your marital status. You don't understand. I have responsibilities and obligations. I can't just walk away from them. And considering all those considerations, I'm sure you can understand that no matter how generous your offer, or however much I'm sincerely touched by it, it would be quite out of the question for me to accept. As yet, you do not know how generous my offer is. My estate is presently valued in excess of $500,000. Half a million dollars? And you, my sole heir. I didn't think there was any one person who had that much money. You were mistaken. Half a million dollars? I agree. It is a sum that may bear certain repetition, but we need not belabor the point, Scarlett. You'd give me all that money if I just stayed on here with you till you passed on? under the conditions of my needs and wishes. Well, what is your answer? No. My answer has to be no. You refuse my proposal? I'm afraid I just have to, Grandfather. How dare you? How dare you turn up your papist peasant knows at the opportunity to become mistress of this great house and attendant to its master. Even supposing I was able to tolerate your intolerable manners, I, which I most definitely would not, the 
the fact that I can turn down your proposition with hardly a twinge of regret is some indication to me that maybe I'm just beginning to think there might be more important things than money after all. Don't mind me saying this, Scarlett, but I, I'm a bit confused, and I don't doubt that Maureen is as well, that here is a bill of divorcement from the very husband that you've been telling us has been dying for your very return to his side in Charleston. There is a bit of confusion there. I fibbed. Oh, well, then that's that clarified. Well, then this document would be more of a shock than a surprise to you. No. It's not so much one as the other. I never dreamed it. I never imagined it. What am I going to do? Oh, there now, love. There now. It's him has committed the sin of divorce, Scarlet, not you. And it's him has suffered the wrath of God for it. I'm pregnant. Glory be to God. Is the man such a blackguard as to divorce the woman carrying his child? He doesn't know. What are you saying, Scarlet? We had a silly old quarrel. We weren't on speaking terms at the time I realized my condition and I was just waiting for the right time to tell. I'd say that it'd be about now. Never. Never, never, never. Divorce me. Divorce me, Willie. But there may come a day when he finds out I've borne him another child, but it'll be over my wizened and lifeless body. Your mind's in too much turmoil to be thinking clearly now, Scarlet. For it's quite clear. You won't be able to keep the truth from him once your babies come. If it's not from you, he hears it, he'll hear it from someone else. I'm far better, I think, if it's from you. Not if I'm so far away, there won't be anyone to tell him. What's in your mind, Scarlet? Far away where? When I was a little girl, my pa was forever going on about Ireland. Or maybe it's time I had a look at what he was going on about. You're for Ireland, then? I'm for Ireland. I've ever laid eyes on Colin. Just like Paul was described it, and we always thought it was gilding the truth a bit. No need to gild it, is there? I never thought I'd ever live to see a place more beautiful than Georgia. Before the war, of course. It's like another world altogether. It's so... so ancient. Nothing like ancient. 200 years, maybe. Fairly new. <laughs> I adore it. I simply adore it. Are we far from Uncle Daniel's house? Not far, no. Well, let me just go over it, see if I remember. There's Grandmother, Katie Scarlet, whose namesake I am, and never, never did I imagine I'd meet her face to face. And there's Uncle Daniel, your pa, and my pa's eldest brother. And there's my cousin... Don't tell me. Timothy and his two sisters. To horse of how many cousins do I have? That's Kathleen and, um, Bridget. A uh, Bridie. Bridie. Did I get them all? Uh, that's them all beneath that roof. Will there really be room for me beneath it, too? Oh, they'll see to that well enough. It's your possessions I have some doubts about. <laughs> I guess I overdid it. But I'll surely find a place of my own very soon, and my clothes and I won't be a bother to anyone, I promise. I'm doubtful we'll be able to locate you a house to equal what you're accustomed to, Scarlet. That's all right. This is a new life. Thank you. 
Everything out. Let him move on. Don't put there with the rest. Come on, Sean. Hurry up. Come on. Hey, we're going. Stand back. There's a bit of trouble here. I won't be long. What kind of trouble? Let me see. Stay in the coach, Grant. Don't get out of it now. Come on. Everything out. Get the table. Well, get the big drink. Move along, Paddy. Move along. You. Priest. Back in your box and get on your way. I'll just have a word with the woman, Captain. You wouldn't deny her a bit of comfort, would you? <laughs> don't fret, don't fret. He's too sorry. I'll send Donnelly over with the cart for your things and we'll find a place for you. <laughs> Stand clear there. Put your backs into it, man! Come on, lad! <laughs> Come on, you're you supposed to be nothing! Oh. Oh. Don't look at it! Come here! Hey. Hey. Come on, hard up, hard up! Oh. Move it! And again! Bring it, bring it! There she goes! Fire! Fire! Come on! Torch it! Torch it! Miss. Colin, what in heaven's name is happening? Come on, Scarlet, come on. Uh, they've destroyed that poor woman's house. It's an eviction, Scarlet. She hasn't the rent money. Well, why did they destroy it? So there's no one will live in it. I, I don't understand. The owner's English. The English own Ireland. You understand that, don't you? Sort of. The owner doesn't want to rent the place at all anymore. He's doing what they call organizing his property. First the rent is raised beyond the possibility of being paid. Then the house is burnt down. Then the land is set to graze in cattle, and that's where the profits are. And that's Ireland, too. There's no beauty about it whatsoever. His name was Brandon. I beg your pardon? When you introduced me to the driver, you called him Brandon, but that soldier back there called him Paddy. We're all Paddies to the English, Scarlet. It's comparable to your despicable term, nigger. I never used that word in my life. Part of laid me wrong. I wasn't referring to you in particular. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I must say, Paddy doesn't sound all that bad. Not as bad as that other. You'd have to be Irish. darling. That'd be one of them as are not us. English? They're getting the lay of the land. Have you turned to stone, the lot of you? Or are you going to give the girl the welcome she came halfway around the world for? Young Katie Scarlet O'Hara, you honor my house and I bid you welcome. Be Bridget. Friday. Oh, Friday. You'll be stopping in my room. 
And Tim. That's right. Hello, Tim. I'll get your bags. <laughs> That's Katie Scarlet. Cheryl's girl, is it? Come at last. And I've lived to see the day. Glory be to God. Oh. Got your note? Evidently. I came as soon as I could. Soon enough. Did you miss me? No doubt you've missed this. Would you like a cup of tea, Scarlett? I'd love it. Kathleen, I've got the feeling my wardrobe might not be appropriate for living in Ireland. Your clothes are beautiful, Scarlett, but you might be right in their lack of fitness. Would you like to lend us something of mine? Thank you, Kathleen. That's very generous of you, but I think I'd better do some shopping just the same. We could go into town today. Oh, I can't today. Column's coming by for me. Is he? Well, where are you off to, then? He wouldn't tell me. Adventuring, he says. <sighs> Come on, then. We'll find you something more fit for adventuring than that. <laughs> Are you going to tell me where we're going before we get there? I am not. If you weren't a priest and my cousin, I'll bet I could wheedle it out of you. <laughs> and wouldn't I enjoy the wheedling, were I not your cousin and a priest? <laughs> As for your priesthood, I'm going to have to ask you to do something with Jack. I guess it will be difficult for you. And what might that be? I have to tell a little fib column, and I have to ask you not to tell anybody that's what it is. A fib? A little white lie that won't hurt anybody. I'm not asking you to tell it. I'm asking you... Well, I'm just asking you not to say anything. Am I likely to choke on these words and not speak? I don't see why. I don't want to be a divorced woman bearing a child. How can you not be that, if it's what you are? I can be a widow. I'm going to tell people my husband recently passed on. And what'll be the point of that, Scarlet? I don't want to be a divorced woman bearing a child of the husband that threw her over. I can't bear it. I simply cannot bear it. Well, nor will you have to, then. Hush now. You won't tell? It could be our secret. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Thank you. And there'll not be a man or woman will ever wheedle it out of me. This 
is Tara. Tara? The first Tara, whose memory your father brought with him to America. Do you see that row of ancient stones over there? That's all we've left of the great banqueting hall that was Tara ten centuries ago. Here's where the O'Hara's sung first, Scarlet. And the Monaghans, the Mahanis, O'Gormans, O'Briens, the Dunahoos, the Carmodies, the heroes. All the heroes. This was Tara. I feel so strange, Colin. It does that to some. What is it? Time. What are you up to? Just something silly, I guess. If only Park knew where I just stood. He does, of course. I wish I could believe that. Give it time. What's this place? Ballyhara. All this land round is known as Ballyhara. 200 years ago, it was our people's land. O'Hara land. That's the big house of Ballyhara. But does no one live in it? It looks deserted. Well, no one lives there, no one will. What do you mean? Why? There's a dark history on it. Tell me. You've got enough folklore for one day, darling. We don't want to overdo it, do we? That's very sad. We had no idea. Give our deepest condolences, dear Scarlet. Thank you. What a tragedy. Your husband passed on whose child you're carrying. But appear I wasn't meant for marriage. All my husbands have died, you see. All? Oh. Are you saying you've been to the altar more than once, then? Three times, as a matter of fact. And lost them, every one. Glory be to God, it's like a curse, isn't it, Brady? Like it makes no difference. My first two husbands were nothing like Red. Not to speak ill of the dead, but... Oh, darling Red. What a man he was. He could make a girl dizzy just thinking about him. My other two husbands were perfectly fine and decent men, but ten of them couldn't have made one Red Butler. I was bashing on a tin pot, and then there's music. to believe that being divorced by her husband would be one of the most devastating things that could happen to a woman. Well, it depends on the woman. As for Scarlet, she can do with being devastated. Is it unseemly me to be speaking about it, Rhett? If it is, I'll... I'll... Everyone else is. Heavens, I can't bite my tongue any longer. I just can't. It was me. I beg your pardon, my dear. Who saw her? Scarlet. In the hotel. I was the one who saw Scarlet with a man I now know is named Ashley Wilkes, but didn't know at the time I saw them. I was the one who told. <laughs> you don't say. I've just been driven to distraction, thinking that was maybe the reason you were divorcing her. Because of the fact that I told her that I saw Scarlet. Well, Scarlet and I have been at loggerheads for some considerable time now. You don't hate me then? I could fully understand if you did, although it would break my heart. Oh, slow down, honey. I appreciate you coming out with it. I spent several years with a woman whose concept of the truth is severely lackadaisical. I find you a real refreshing change. You do? Really? You bet. I feel like a great big hunk of solid rock's been lifted off my back. I'm quite pleased to relieve you. Still no, weren't you just perfectly furious when you heard about Scarlet? Well, Scarlet hasn't always played by the rules, Anne. But then, neither have I. But she's a woman. She certainly is. I've been thinking about what you were saying this afternoon. Oh, what did I say? About rules, playing by the rules. 
In regard to Scarlet. Well, I got the impression, maybe I'm mistaken, I could be totally mistaken, but I got the impression you were suggesting a woman has the same sort of prerogatives to take as a man, by way of behaving. As long as she can be sensible about it. About what? Whatever comes of her claiming the prerogative. Like what you were saying about gambling and chance in losing. And winning. And winning, yes. A woman like that's particularly attractive to a certain kind of man. She is. What do you think about that? About what? About taking your prerogative and the risks that come with it. I guess I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know that I've got a prerogative to take. Sure you do. I do? No question about you having it. Only a question about you taking it. What are you doing? Doing? I'm, I'm looking around. You're not Irish. I'm American. From the southern portion of that troubled land, I take it. Georgia. Ah, you're among the vanquished in the recent unpleasantness between the states. We lost the war, mister. Nobody vanquished us. <laughs> I mean no offense, Mrs. Butler. My full name and the one I prefer to go by is Scarlett O'Hara, Butler. And I'm getting something of a crick in my neck looking at you up there. In my country, a gentleman dismounts when addressing a lady. He also generally introduces himself unless he has some nefarious reason not to do so. Fenton. Fenton what? <laughs> well, actually, I'm the Earl of Fenton. That's a magnificent piece of horse flesh you're riding there, Earl. You know something of horses, dear? More than something. This isn't mine. It belongs to my uncle. I'll be getting myself a proper horse real soon. Yes, I should say that might be advisable. <laughs> <laughs> this land once belonged to my family, the O'Harris. You don't say. Maybe some of it will again. And how might that come about? It's called Ballyhara. Yes, I know. You don't happen to know who owns it, do you? As a matter of fact, I do. Why do you ask? I'm just curious. 
How much land goes with it? 1,200 acres. That's a nice piece of property. It's a wreck of a place. Have you been inside? I was just looking for a way in. What do I mean? Must have been a grand house before it's left to go to rack and ruin. You know anything of the history of Ballyhar? I get the impression something unpleasant happened, but I don't know what. It was built by an Englishman, of course. The house passed from generation to generation until the time of the famine. Are you familiar with the famine here in Ireland? My pa told us all about it. The then Lord of Ballyharder was unable, it seems, to bear the horrors of starvation and death. He bought a ship to provide free passage to America for his tenants, their families, anyone who cared to take advantage of his pity and largesse. Many did. The exact number was never known, surely in the hundreds. But they all drowned when the ship went down in the first heavy sea encounter. Oh, my Lord. Not long after, the Lord of Ballyhard was found in the stable, bound hand and foot, and hung from a raft. The act, of course, of a handful of demented paddies bound in revenge. Of course, there was retribution for the murder. Five men from the village were chosen at random and hanged. Hanged by who? By the legal representatives of the British crown, of course. It was all 30 years ago. The house hasn't been occupied since. Local witchery has it inevitably that the house is haunted. Well, considering that story, if any place had a right to be haunted, I guess it would be Valley Hair. And by the way, should we have a chance to meet again after today, don't you dare ever use the word Patty in my presence again. Have I encountered a Fenian heart and an American breast, then? A what? The word is unfamiliar to you, I think. Fenian? Fenian Brotherhood. A secret Irish society dedicated to the violent and bloody overthrow of British rule in Ireland. Knowing full well the mayhem inherent in that hopeless wish. That's politics. I don't want anything to do with politics. It's very wise of you. Well, ghosts or no ghosts, I'd still like to speak to the owner. You are? The man who was hanged was my father. May I offer you some lunch, Mrs. Butler? You aren't far from Fenton Hall. And the way it looks now reminds me of the condition of our homes after the Yankees passed through. Except the state Valley Harrison's, the result of nothing more than downright neglect. Anyone can see what a beautiful place it must have been once. Well, I know how you feel about the English, but they sure know how to build houses. Now, what's this I hear about it being haunted? Has anyone ever actually seen a ghost at Valley Harrow? Now I know what's different about supper tonight. I'm the only one talking. What's going on? Something happened? Did somebody die? Look, are we going to sit here all night like lumps in a log or will we have it out? You're known to have been consorting with the master of Fenton Hall today, Scarlett. That's it said. Consorting? <laughs> what's that supposed to mean, consorting? I met him by accident at Valley Harrow and he invited me to his home for lunch. How did you know about it, anyway? Scarlet, there's nothing happens here that the whole county doesn't know about, be the fall or dark. Best to keep it in mind for future referral. Now, look here. I'm real fond of all of you, and I have the greatest respect for your feelings about the English, but I have the slightest bit of objection about being told who I can't talk to and who I can't. And right she is. Well, Scarlet's got nothing to do with our troubles, Dad. Can she be among us and have nothing to do with them? She can if she likes. It's her decision to make and no judgment on us. Would you all please stop talking about me as though I was somewhere else? But you're not somewhere else, darling. And that's the point of it. I don't want anything to do with politics. Politics? Is it politics you call it, woman? Father. Daniel, nothing was ever heard any the better for shouting. Yes, that's what I'll call it. I've seen it and I've seen what it can do. From Fort Sumter to the terrible day General Lee handed over his sword at Appomattox Courthouse. And millions dead between, and ruination and despair. 
I've had my belly and I'll have no more. I'm sorry for shouting. Call it politics, if that's your need, Scarlet. But what we're about here is human suffering. After the hanging and the murders, Fenton's mother took him and his sister away to live in England. <clears throat> that's still his real home place. But five years or so ago, he bought Fenton Hall, as he came to call it. He passes a fair bit of his time there. I get the impression he's not very well liked. No well, more or less than any of the rest of them. But I don't think you should encourage an association with him. God's nightgown, you two. I'm not encouraging anything with him. All's well, then. Home sweet home, should you choose to call it that. There's a sleeping chamber there. Could do with a few more sticks of furniture. What do you think? It'll do just fine, Colin. Now, where can I buy a good horse and a trap? Of course not. Well, what do you mean, she do it? I told you. I compromised her. Didn't force herself on her, did you? You know better than to ask that. Sure do not apologize. She bragging on you to make an honest woman of her. Maybe she's making an honest man of me. Oh, Rip. It's gonna be terrible for your reputation, fat we just round. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just adorable, Mrs. Scanlon. This one especially. When's the baby coming then? November, I hope. Oh, that's lovely. Ladies. Good morning, Father. Colin. Is she buying out the shop, Mrs. Scanlon? Oh, just the baby stuff thus far, but I'm still hoping. I'm only pulling your leg. I should hope so, after what I carried out of the shop for myself not two weeks ago. Ah, there's no one in Adamstown could complain of your costume, Mrs. Butler. I can't make up my mind. I'll take them all, Mrs. Scanlon. Oh, <laughs> there's the proof of it. <laughs> Come on, Benny. You and your help. take for Ballyhara. Are you quite serious? Let's find out. Uh, Have your hands! Uh, Shoot! Uh, Have your hands! Hey, what? Uh, it's Ballyhara! Uh, Have your hands! The O'Hara woman has just made purchase at Ballyhara and a thousand acres with it. Have you been doing your drinking elsewhere today, O'Brien? Oh, O'Brien must have been talking to the little people again. <laughs> but it's the truth. I've just had it right from the lips of Father Colin himself. Now, would you call him a liar? If you're pulling our legs, O'Brien, we'll hang you from the rafters by the two of yours. May I be struck dead first if I'm not telling the truth? Oh God, I believe he is. And there's plenty of work to be had for every man Jack as wants it. Putting it back to its former state. And farms to be had. And rents that'll never rise. Oh, no that's for promise. Well, here's the Scarlet O'Hara then. God bless a rare soul who's took back what was took from us and made an Irish one yeah. more. Yeah. Now, I say now's as good a time as any. We have to consider the risk and trust in her. Where's the risk, man? Do you suppose for a moment she's going to go running to the barracks, hollering sedition? 
There's as much chance of that as me doing the same. Well, the worst thing that can happen now is her turning us down. What do you think, Colin? I think there is to be more hers than ours. How do you figure that? Were she to be discovered helping us? She'd know that risk. It's for her to decide. No, I say now's the time. Are you having relations with your O'Hara woman? Don't be impertinent. I was only wondering. You're not here to wonder. There's some whispering it about, as to you and her. Be quiet. I want to go now. I needn't inquire as to your identity. I presume you're the American woman. You presume, right. What are you doing to these people? I'm executing an order on behalf of Her Majesty's government for the eviction of the persons resident on this property for reasons of their having fallen in arrears on the rent. Now, stand aside, please, miss. Are you in arrears, Kathleen? God help us, we are, Scarlett. How much? I beg your pardon. It's their pardon you should be begging, not mine. How much in arrears are they? Constable? Seven pounds, eight shillings, nine pence. Well, do you want it or don't you? I don't have nine pence. You can keep the change. She just take the cake. <laughs> I'll pay you back every penny. I swear it on my father's grave. Why didn't you tell me you needed money? I'd have been glad to help you. I'll not take charity, Scarlet. It's family, Uncle Daniel. There's no charity in family. Nevertheless, every penny. All right, then. Well, maybe we can make some kind of an arrangement. What does that be? Will you come and farm a piece of my land? The rent will be better. Well, not only for you, for anyone who comes as tenant at Ballyhara. You can put the difference between your rent here and the rent there will pay me back. It's fine land up there. It's O'Hara land. Every penny, mind. And a bit more. I didn't have the exact change. I to tell you I'll be away for a while. Away? Where? America. Boston, Philadelphia. Well, don't be going too long. Only as long as it's needed. It's coming along. Not fast enough. Ah. Fast is a word you'll find mysteriously absent from the Irish vocabulary, darling. <laughs> you'll be needing help in the run of a house the size of this. 
I've taken the liberty of arranging that for you. Rosaline Fitzpatrick's her name. Formerly head housekeeper in the estate, the far side of Trim, near Laracor. How much obliged, Colm. I hadn't thought of that. I'll have her drop by at your convenience. I have other news as well. I've had a letter from Savannah, from Tommy Shannon. The works formal on the new cathedral being built there, you may recall. It concerns your Tara. It's about time. What's the news? Having been faced with a retarded pace of work on the building of the new cathedral, as was hinted to him as a possibility by Tommy, the good bishop has reconsidered your proposal to buy back your sister's share of Tara and is prepared to enter into negotiations on a fair price. Hallelujah. <sighs> Won't all this alter your plans somewhat? How? Well, you seem to be amassing a considerable amount of property all along. Colin, what we're standing on was here a million, million years ago. How can anyone have too much of anything that lasts that long? Hurry up, hurry up. I never thought of it quite like that. But then I don't know of any but you who would. <laughs> You'll be needing considerable staff, of course. Well, I don't know about considerable. Mostly just someone to run the place, and I'm assuming that'll be you, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Anna? I'll only be using a few rooms of Valley Hire at first. When'll the child be coming? I judge October or thereabouts. So that's what I'm figuring on around late October. I just got to finish up work on the house, enough for me to move into it before then. Why is that? I want my baby to be born here. You'll be needing a steward to manage the butler and the footman and the like, and a head stableman to supervise the grooms. How many horses have you in mind to have? Well, I haven't gone around to thinking about horses yet, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Oh, I'm late in expressing my pleasure at meeting you and being in your employ, Mrs. Butler. It'll be an honor to be housekeeper for the O'Hara. Beg your pardon? I say I'd be honored being housekeeper for the O'Hara. The O'Hara? What do you mean? Are you not aware then? You're called the O'Hara now. Head of the family O'Hara and all its branches. And a rare grace it is, you're being a woman. Hasn't been a female born the title in, oh, must be over a hundred years or more. You God, well, what do I have to do? The soul will be coming to you with their various troubles now and again. There'll be the odd squabble amongst families that might be needing your attention. There may be occasional intercessions with the landlord asked of you. But there's nothing that you're not equal to from what I've heard of you thus far. Well, I'll do my best, but what I'd be equal to right now is some lunch. Why don't we go down to the village and drop into the pub? Oh, well, now, uh, women are rare enough in carnies, Mrs. Butler, and never unescorted. But I'm the O'Hara. Done with me then for this evening, Lord Fenton, sir. Get dressed. You hurt me. God bless all here. Colin! You're back! Oh. How are you? Welcome. I missed you so Thank you. So how is Boston? In Philadelphia, was it? Uh, quite civilized and pleased to report. You sure travel far afield to save souls. Oh. If this little creature was kicking me like that from the outside, I'd be black and blue. <laughs> Poor lamb. How much longer? About three weeks, I reckon. And will you have your wishes to the birthplace? I will. The whole house isn't finished yet, but 
Enough so I'll have my baby beneath Bally Harris' roof. Well, be sure to stay beneath it the night of All Hallows' Eve. Well, what do you mean? What's that? Oh, the same as your Halloween. Though we take it considerably more seriously, I believe, than you do. It's coming a week Saturday. Stay in your house with your door shut tight and your curtains drawn. For that's the night that all the goblins and ghosts and spirits from all the times since the world began come out. Some carrying their heads beneath their arms and all other manner of unnatural things. Colin. Oh, well. Perhaps you're not quite Irish enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's some plaster needed here and there in the walls, but I believe with a good fire in the hearth, cheerful curtains in the windows, the room will afford quite reasonable comfort. Oh, and there's a surprise for you. We found it in the attic. Sweet mercy, what is it? It's a state bed, probably made specially for the visit of the Viceroy years ago. Who's that? The head of the government in Ireland. I've ordered a comfy mattress made. I could sleep for a week in this thing and never hit the same spot twice. I'd say it's a bed once more than one in it. Mrs. Fitzpatrick, whatever are you suggesting? Oh. <laughs> I trust there's been no signs of ghosts as yet. <laughs> Not yet. They'll probably wait until I get all settled in before they make their presence known. Do <laughs> you believe in ghosts? I don't believe in them, but I'm scared of them. <laughs> Have you a preference? I'm hoping for a girl. It would appear you haven't long to wait before you know. No, but it's banging on the gates all right. It must be quite difficult, widowed and bearing a child. I would have preferred it otherwise. I would have been by sooner, but I'm just back from Dublin. It's a beautiful city. You must see it. I have every intention of seeing it. Perhaps you would allow me to be your guide and escort. You might care to meet some of the fashionable people. I dare say even the Viceroy. Does it sound at all appealing? You have to admit it does. I could benefit from some relief from all the mud and muck and sawdust I've been slogging through of late. But there's somebody else I've got to meet first, though. Of course. But in due time. In due time, I just might. Like this. Well, I was halfway here when the storm broke. It was as easy to keep coming as to turn back. And who but a priest to venture out on All Hallows' Eve? You're just in time for supper. Oh, I was hoping I might be. Here, this came in the Adamstown Post for you today. I was waiting on something for my lawyer in Atlanta. This is neat, though. It's from one of my aunts in Charleston. Mrs. Fitz, would you lay another place for Carl? I'll just go make myself a bit more presentable. There isn't the time. There's something not natural here. There's blood. Look. I can't vouch for myself to do it, Colin. Well, I'll fetch someone who will. No one will venture out in All Hallows Eve. Perhaps I'll get someone to come under special protection.
Aslan, Ali. 